Welcome to this series of videos. These are designed to assist boards and councils of Catholic schools to be better equipped and to discuss issues and make decisions that are supportive of the Catholic tradition. This video will focus on boards and why lay people have an increased role in governance of Catholic schools. Leading this presentation today is Dr. Rosemary Prosser, who is a lecturer in Practical Theology at the Yarra Theological Union, which is part of the University of Divinity. Welcome, Rosemary. Rosemary, could you please comment on why lay people are taking much more responsibility for the governance of Catholic schools? Well, Shirley, the Catholic Church went through a huge change in the way it saw itself 50 years ago when Pope John XXIII called the Second Vatican Council. All the bishops of the Catholic Church were called to Rome and they spent three years looking at issues and they came out with 16 documents. Pope John XXIII said he called the Council to open the windows of the Church to allow the Holy Spirit come in. But in fact what happened is the Church was brought into the modern world during that time. The Church um, looked at how it was going to dialogue with science, the scientific developments that had occurred, theories of evolution, um, advances in technology, in the understanding of the human person coming from psychology, um, in the latest uh, ideas coming out of archaeology and the interpretation of ancient texts, and in the study of world religions. And the process, I suppose, was really called reading the signs of the times. There were major insights that came out of the um, Vatican II. Um, one major one was the idea that the mystery we call God is present to everyone in all world religions and in all cultures. An insight that uh, showed us that the books of the Bible were written 2,000, 3,000 years ago uh, they need to be interpreted in the context of when they were written and the communities for whom they were written. We learnt that Jesus was a Jew in first century Palestine and that the message that he had that are reported in the Gospels was about bringing God's plan for the world, the kingdom of God, place, a place where everybody was welcome, that um, everybody was equal and those on the edge of society had to be really looked after. A change also in the way we view church. Instead of thinking the, of the church as a hierarchy with uh, religious and, and the, clerical, the clerics being the most important people, Vatican II said, we are all the church, the people of God. We are the people of God. And everybody, by virtue of their baptism, is called to be a disciple, to be on mission, to bring about the kingdom of God in the world, wherever they are. And what's happening in the governance of schools is really the religious congregations putting into practice what Vatican II um, suggested in the documents on the role of the church in the modern world and the role of the laity in the church. The message of Vatican II is being put into practice in a big way by Pope Francis. The Economist, in a recent article, suggested to business schools that they put Pope Francis as one of the top turnaround CEOs in what he's done in 12 months to um, rebrand RC Global. I think that's really quite interesting. And the fact that Time magazine, with its photo of Pope Francis on the front cover, saying that he was the most influential world leader in 2013, shows what an impact he has had on people generally, but on baptised people. He is saying that the church and all of us in the church all baptised people have to bring about the kingdom of God in their time and place and that we all have to be communities of hospitality, of um, welcome and of outreach to the, those marginalised in society. What a great model we have in Pope Francis. <laughs>